due to a landmine explosion uh, from a, uh, uh, during the Ecuador uh, war that was happening 35 years prior. And so this next video, it's going to show his story and him actually trying to control this very early prototype of our hand. And so this new story, it's, it's showing um, basically the events of that day. And so you can see that there's the bionic hand on the table and he's actually trying to use his muscles to control it. So it says Juan is an ex-commander of the, the army and this is how he lost his hand. Um, 30 years had passed. Um, and this is really salient where he says um, several members of his infantry suffered grave injuries and particularly it cost him his left hand. And um, we were able to make technological advances in the hand, and you can see it's fully 3D printed, but he said that part of him is back, that it's back. And this was because Juan had made a pinch with his left hand for the first time in 35 years. In fact, he had forgotten how to make a pinch with his left hand, and we had to retrain his brain by placing a mirror in front of his amputated side, reflecting his right hand, tricking his brain into thinking that his left hand was there. And so when he tried to make a pinch with both sides, it reactivated his muscles so that he was actually able to make that pinch. And so when he said that, he felt as though a part of him had come back. That's when I realized that if I stay in academia, this just ends up as a journal paper. If we want everyone to feel the exact same way that Juan did, we had to commercialize the technology. And that's when Psionic was born. So that's what the hand looked like then, right? Like three times the size of a human hand, had wires going everywhere, plugged into breadboards, power supplies, the wall. And this is what the hand looks like now. And so, um, let's see. Yep. So this is retired U.S. Army Sergeant Garrett Anderson doing push-ups for one of the first times since his Army days because he could actually um, support his body weight on the prosthetic hand. He can also do 50-pound kettlebell swings, but you can also use it for any sort of activity of daily living. Something as mundane as closing your laptop lid or one of our first patients, Tina, being able to feed her granddaughter for the very first time because she could hold the bottle with her bionic hand and hold the baby with her natural hand. And this is what we're all about, making advanced bionic limbs um, that are accessible uh, for, for humans and uh, improving their quality of life. And so this is kind of an overview of what the, um, what the hand is like. But rather than you looking at a screen, I've got it with me right over here. So um, I'm controlling it with these two buttons right now, but the most common way to control a hand like this is if you have two muscle sensors that are placed on your uh, wrist flexor and your wrist extensor. So it's, if I bend my wrist in, the hand closes. If I extend my wrist out, the hand opens back up and I can switch back and forth between those two. And then um, when the hand is open, if I open it again, I can switch to a different grip. So here's a pinch, for example. If I'm at the beach, you know, I can uh, rock on and, uh, or hang loose. And then um, uh, our user favorite is the finger wave where you can see all the fingers moving. Hello, everyone. And you can do, you know, a nice chill finger wave too if you wanted to uh, as well. So the thing is this hand is super robust to impact so I can smash it, it totally survives. Um, I've dropped it from the roof of my house 30 feet in the air, um, it survived that. I've stepped on it. Um, I put it in a dryer for 10 minutes and we stuck a GoPro in the dryer and it uh, survived tumbling around. Um, I've arm wrestled the paratriathlete national champion and lost. Um, and uh, we even did like flaming board breaking with it. So this thing can um, take quite a beating. So it's uh, water resistant up to the wrist. So if it gets dirty, you just wash it like you would in a sink. Um, it's lighter than an average adult human hand. So um, it's 490 grams, average adult human hand is 520 grams. It's USB-C rechargeable. So the same way you plug in your phone, you can plug in your hand. It lasts about eight to 10 hours on a single charge, recharges from zero to 100% in an hour. If you're out in the woods, you can use a portable power pack, but you can also charge your phone from your hand. So we give our users a superhuman ability. I wish I could charge my phone from my hand as well, right? Um, it's also the first hand on the market to give users touch feedback. So there are six touch sensors in the fingertips, and uh, the user feels a vibration when they're actually touching an object. So Sergeant Anderson, he told us that he could actually feel his daughter's hand, and that was something that he couldn't do with any other prosthetic hand that he's had before. <coughs> and that's why we do uh, what we do. The best part of the whole thing, though, is that we actually got it covered by Medicare in the US. So we expanded access from 10% of patients who could afford a hand to now 75% of Americans can afford the most advanced bionic limbs. And that's what we're all about, as I was saying. So um, 
there's a bunch of fun videos um, that, we, uh, that we have here. And so I think the next one uh, was our uh, a paratriathlete national champion. Um, the first time he was fitted with the device, after three minutes, someone threw him a water bottle and he was actually able to catch it. And, uh, and so that just is a testament to how fast the reaction speed is. So it's two and a half times faster than any other bionic can on the market. And then stupidly, I decided to challenge him to an arm wrestling match. And um, so this next uh, video shows me arm wrestling him at the State Farm Center at the University of Illinois. And um, unfortunately, I ended up uh, losing. So I got to start working out a bit more so I can get my revenge on, um, on Dan. Um, next time. But if you guys remember that viral trend from several years ago about um, if you have a partially filled bottle of water and you try flipping it and you try making it land right side up, you can imagine that's a lot harder to do with a bionic hand. And so our uh, one of our patients, uh, Kate Kettlehone, she got the hand when she was 17. She came over to our lab and was just nailing these shots all over the place. And this next one is one of my favorites where you can see her in the stairwell and she does this bottle flip and lands it two stories up on the windowsill uh, because of the flexibility of the fingers. Um, and uh, we can also um, make the hand go 360 degrees around, so uh, another superhuman ability that we've uh, given our users there. And um, Sergeant Anderson is also, um, as I had mentioned, done flaming board breaking with the hand, so the, the hand is super robust uh, to, to impacts. Okay, and so I was telling you guys about uh, Juan, and um, actually last September, after nine years, we, we were finally able to go back to Ecuador and deliver him a hand that he will actually use on a daily basis. And so this was an incredible moment after like, you know, nine years of engineering development that we were able to actually give back the person who started this whole thing um, a hand. And so this next video, this is Juan at the supermarket in Ecuador, grabbing a naranjilla fruit and being able to smell it. Um, and this is just this incredible moment of just this full circle of going from this crazy, you know, engineered device that was three times the size of a human hand to this one that he's actually wearing on a daily basis and incorporating into his life. And so, funnily enough, um, if you're building a robot to build uh, to do human tasks, we've optimized our hand for human to, to do human tasks. So it makes sense that the robots use the same thing. So. Um, We've actually had a number of robotics companies actually use our hand too, including NASA, Facebook, uh, Mercedes is using it to build cars on humanoid robots. Uh, and this next video shows um, NASA uh, using their hand on their humanoid astronaut robot, Valkyrie, to do tasks that you might find on the International Space Station. And so I was actually controlling this in a VR headset in the corner over there. And these are like bags and, and uh, tools and equipment that you might find on the International Space Station. And you can see that you can do all these dexterous movements um, that you would with a natural hand um, on these robots. And um, the coolest part about this, and you'll see this picture in just a bit, we had one of our users come with us to Houston, and so she is fist bumping the NASA robot using the exact same hand that the NASA robot is using. In fact, we can take it off the NASA robot, put it on her, and then it would actually be controlled by her muscles just naturally. And in fact, um, you can see these like this panel of like buttons and knobs and switches that, that you might find on the ISS. NASA was actually having trouble with doing a, a zipper that was on the wall. And so Ani, our user, she actually goes up to that zipper and easily does it with her bionic hand. And the NASA engineers were just like, whoa, we didn't even realize you could do it like that. So we were basically teaching the NASA engineers how to use the robot. And I was like, wow, this is such an incredible moment just to see you know, how our, our prosthetic hand users can um, use their abilities to translate into humanoid robots as well. But, we don't need to put the hand on a, a humanoid robot, we can put it on any robot. And so that includes robot dogs, for example. And so we decided to put the hands on a uh, Boston Dynamics robot dog, and we decided to give it some lightsabers. And you can find all these videos on our YouTube channel as well. <laughs> And for those of you, uh, those of you Star Wars nerds uh, in the audience, uh, we refer to this as General Grievous's dog. And of course, I had to fight the dog with my lightsaber. <laughs> And unfortunately, I ended up losing again. I, I keep losing these challenges. I got to start getting better at this, right? 
Um, so we have a lot of fun at Psionic um, doing, uh, doing cool things like this. And, and in fact, you don't even need to put the, the robot hand on a dog. You can just have the robot hand work on its own. And so um, for Halloween every year, we decide to make videos of just the hand doing like crazy and almost creepy stuff. And so the, we'd moved here about a year and a half ago. And the uh, first thing that we did uh, was our next Halloween video where we made the hand walk on its own Adam's Family style. And uh, yeah, the, I, I, I barely escaped this one. <laughs> uh, and so as I was mentioning, so we moved to San Diego about a year and a half ago. And um, we moved here particularly because we're working with the Navy Hospital and UCSD, where I'm affiliate faculty in bioengineering, to do the next generation of these bionic limbs. So what I was showing you before were all these like pre-programmed movements of the hand, right? Where you could do like a power grip or like a hang loose or make a finger wave. But that's not how we control our hands naturally. We do individual finger movements, right? We don't feel vibrations when we touch the fingers. You feel like an actual pressure sensation coming from your hand, right? And so um, we've actually been working with the Navy Hospital to uh, directly implant the sensors in your nerves directly, as well as a titanium implant that goes in your bones, and then you would attach the hand directly to your bones. And we've actually also um, attached the hand to a robot arm that could be controlled with brain implants. And so this next video was actually on 60 Minutes last year with our collaborators at the University of Chicago. And they had a patient who uh, got in a car accident four years ago and uh, was paralyzed, and they put brain implants in him. And he, uh, he was able to shake the host of 60 Minutes' his hand. That, that's his index finger, that's his middle finger, that's his ring finger, because it's stimulating that corresponding area of the brain. And this is where we're heading with this technology, this seamless integration between humans and machines. And um, to, to finish this talk, I want to kind of give you guys a glimpse of where we're heading with this stuff um, in the future. And so um, we're going to do something fun here. And uh, if I could have a volunteer from the audience who wants to come up and actually try and control them. Okay, yeah, great. <laughs> that was quick. I love it. Hello. <laughs> Oh, no, no, you'll, you'll be fine. Uh, well, nice to meet you. Hi, nice to meet you. <laughs> well, what's your name? Uh, Talia. Talia? Nice to meet you, Talia. I'm Adil. And so this is what we're going to do. So um, what I want you to do is you're going to put your hand in front of the camera here. And um, I am going to say it you know, in front of this camera, actually. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to put the, the microphone down for just a second. Actually, it'll actually mimic what she's doing. Thank you. Uh, so she can, yeah. So if you move each individual finger, the, the fingers are moving individually. Uh, and yes, you can you can flip people off if you wanted to as well too. It's usually the first thing uh, people do. So yep, there you go. <laughs> Thank you, Talia. And so, uh, thank you everyone. Uh, and so this is where we're heading, like I said, with this technology, the seamless integration between humans and machines. And so we're hoping that we'll be starting clinical trials with um, the Navy Hospital in the next year and a half. And um, we'll actually be able to have our first patients playing piano or typing on a keyboard again. And so um, we're excited to be here and turn San Diego into the bionics capital of the world. So again, I'm Dr. Adil Akhtar, CEO and founder of Psionic. Um, thank you for having me here and I'd be happy to take any questions that you guys have. Thank you. I had a question. Um, so I see you're making prosthetic hands. Are you planning to make like prosthetic legs or any other limbs in the future? <laughs> Thank you. Um, so the question was, um, we're making prosthetic hands, are we working on other limbs? Um, and so we're currently working on a wrist and an elbow, but we also have a five-year goal of making an ability leg that you can do a triathlon in. So run, bike, and swim. And um, the triathlon was invented in San Diego, so another good reason to be here. But also the Challenge Athletes Foundation is about 10 minutes away from us, and uh, we can uh, work with them to like, they hold the paratriathlon every year um, to do some really, really cool things with the bionic limbs that are going to come out soon. Any other questions? 
All right, well, thank you again. And I'll, I'll be around here too. So if you guys have any other questions in person, feel free to come up. Thank you, everyone.